<laughs> Hello to everybody in the world and probably everybody in our workshop. Welcome to our ninth week in our virtual workshops, uh, workshops of the summer. As you can see, we have one of our members, Janira Santiago. Santiago. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> and today, we're going to start the month of villains and people that are bad and antagonists and all that. So I have her here because she's going to comment about things that I say. And it's awesome because it's the first um, workshop that I have somebody with me. How are you, Janira? I'm good. She's good. She hated the way up here because I live so oh. high up. Yeah, I know. I'm the villain now. <laughs> okay. First of all, let's talk about what we're going to do this month. This month started today on July, and it's going to end probably on the 20th, 20, 21, 21st of August because it's a complete month. And today I'm going to be talking about what is a villain or, in, in literature, an antagonist. And I'm going to say or present 15 examples of villains in literature according to a website that, it's, that I found that it talks about, that it, it says opinions about why they are the best villains of literature. And I agree with, okay, wait, wait. And I agree with them because they are badass. Sorry. <laughs> Let me see if it's... I like. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it can you do with that live? I mean, we're live now. Um, okay. Now, what is. Wait, wait, wait. Emotional support, Lily. Okay. Mm. Let's talk about what is an antagonist or as a synonym, villain evil person, bad guy, whatever, all that. Antagonist is defined as a person who is supposed to struggles against or compete with another opponent or adversary and also the adversary of the hero or protagonist of a drama or other literary work. So, cool guys. The what? Cool guys. The cool guys, basically, because, you know, all villains are the... The awesomest and raddest villains in 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 um the most awesome villains uh, the most awesome characters are villains so basically that's fun we all love villains because you know you of the workshop wanted to talk about villains and here we have back to the bone August yay back to the bone August yeah okay where are my papers. Oh my god, where did I put the papers? There. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Let's talk about the villains in literature. And these villains are so evil that according to the website that I researched for, um, it it says that they are they, they have the overall characteristics of a villain which is being evil hearted or having evil motivations to destroy the, the the hero or the protagonist and usually the villain creates a conflict. Note, note, note. The villain doesn't necessarily have to be a human being. It can be a force, a mythological creature, a fantastical creature like a demon or, a, or even a hurricane can be the villain because it's a force of nature against the protagonist. So Ta -da. Villains are everywhere, and you, you need to create one at the end of the month, and it's going to be exciting. Okay, let's begin with our 15 characters. Should I go from 15? No, no, no. Number one, it's from the epic poem by John Milton called Paradise Lost, and the character is, wait for it, Satan. The... The evilest of all evil in literature and in the Bible, which I consider literature, work, of, of written work. Um, and Satan, 
basically in Paradise Lost, and as it said, he, uh, says here, is the ultimate villain in literature. And... Okay. <laughs> it's a fallen angel that wants to destroy his creator, or God, and wants to overthrow him, basically. And he does that with the, with the story of the fall of man, uh, the temptation of Adam and Eve, and that's basically what Paradise Lost by John Milton is about, writ written in 1667. It's very old. And it the poem concerns the biblic biblical story of the fall of man, like I said, and the temptation of Adam and Eve by the fallen angel and the ultimate building of this poem, Satan, and their expulsion from the Garden of Eden. So we all know about that story from the biblical sense. We need to read Paradise Lost. Which I haven't read. I know. I, I suck at this. Do you have anything to say about Satan? I haven't read it. Me neither. <laughs> so, okay. Let's continue on with our second villain and or antagonist for this workshop. His name, um, he is from the work of Othello by William Shakespeare, which we all love. I'm not Shakespearean. I'm, I'm sorry. Me but uh, it was written in 1603, and the villain is considered his most evil and evilest, uh, evilest of all villains in all the William Shakespeare literary masterpieces. And his name is Iago. Iago from Othello. Basically, uh, Othello is a tragedy that portrays racism, love, jealousy, and betrayal. So it's it's good. And you know somebody's going to die because it's a tragedy. Duh. Um, and basically, what makes Iago evil? Iago hates Othello, which... Wait, wait. Oh, my God. Wait. Give me a moment. I forgot to, to research who Othello was. To write it down, I researched. Okay. <laughs> Othello is a Moorish general in the v Venetian army. And Lady Beth is? No, no. Okay. Sorry, Lily Beth is, is, is being cool. Um, Othello is a Moorish general in the Venetian army, so basically he is somebody important. Yeah, so, oh my god, that's a story I'm writing. Sorry. Um, Iago hates Othello. He hates, hates him to the core. So much that he tricks him into believing that his wife, Desdemona, is having an affair with the lieutenant, which his name is Cassio, the lieutenant. And that basically makes Iago plan a vendetta against him, driving Othello to kill his own wife. Yeah. He's a master of manipulation and deception. Thank you. Oh my God. Yes, you can read too. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna read also. Like Johnny said, he is also a master of manipulation and deception. But because basically he drives Othello to kill his wife, Desdemona. How evil is that? I actually read part of it. I. I. I, I got bored. I, I. Yeah. Um, we respect people that love William Shakespeare, but you are our heroes. I mean. I couldn't even get through Macbeth in a children's coloring book version. That's sad, man. That's very sad. Okay, let's go on to our modern century, which is the 20th century. That's what I mean. Um, the White Witch from The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, written in 1950. We all know who the White Witch is because she is a total villain in the high fantasy novel and children's book. I can't believe it's considered a children's book. Yes. That's, that's horrible. Um, that's what he got published. Yeah, C.S. Lewis is very good in, in, in that. Um, what I found is that basically the White Witch wants to prevent Christmas. She wants to prevent Christmas. That's, that's evil. That is evil. You do not want to do that. Somebody's dying. Oh, 
Dice que está de repente como que el experience technical, technical difficulties. I hope it's not something bad. A ver cómo nos vemos. It's something. Okay. Oh my God. Here's the ultimate villain of my house, Pauline. Um, the White Witch, she also, this characteristics is that she is quite dispassionate and we all know that from the people that haven't read the books but have read the have watched the movie she's evil cold hearted the she's the white witch of snow and all that she is cruel and uses magic for her own terrorifical ter is terrorifical a word her own evil ways for terrorism in Narnia damn that's beautiful I know right it's beautiful you you go lay the the what yes she read the, the, the novel. What do you say about the White Witch in the novel? She isn't that good at being a villain, actually. She's just, I imagine that she's just there. And like just, you know, she already froze half of Narnia and that's evil enough, right? Yeah. She doesn't do much. Uh, but still, she, crea the she, creates a, she creates a conflict. So basically, that's why she's a villain. So... Yeah, but you know, she's like, haha, I froze Narnia, so what? I have an American shirt. Okay, now let's go to something darker involving school massacres. So this is getting serious right now. It's from a novel called We Need to Talk About Kevin by. I'm sorry, I don't know what I wrote. Lionel Shriver. Yeah, that's a, that's a novel, yeah. Written in 2003. Yeah, you can put it the other one, baby. The novel is about a fictional school massacre, and it's written from the perspective of the mother, you know, from the from the perspective of the, killer, of the killer's mother, the mommy. And basically, the main character is called Kevin, and he is the villain, the antagonist, and is a sociopath behind a school massacre and he also does other things that make him more evil like hitting his mother and he even manipulates a girl into gogging her eczema affected skin Ugh, that's disgusting and it is implied that he also is behind an accident of on which his sister loses an eye that's I, I wanna read that novel <laughs> so bad it is considered a, thr a thriller basically with the movement that it, that it, in which it goes and this is what makes him more evil. He doesn't have a justification of why he killed the, the, the students in the school massacre. He just did it. That's evil enough for him. That's that's evil, man. That's that's evil. Okay, let me check on the, the chat if, if there's any. Why isn't there the chat? Okay, mira. First, Joker without a face, spoiler. Random comment. Hi, that's myself. Why murder? She is a glorified Scrooge. The White Witch is just like a Paco. Exactly. A fish. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Okay. Hey, you're here. Okay. Let's continue. I hope you had your comment about Kevin and his massacre way. His ways of making and doing massacre. I need to read, girl. I need to look for the dictionary. Jesus. <laughs> It's there. And it's here. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Number five of our top 15 villains that I found on the internet. Um, Simon Legree from Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. Written in 1852. An anti-racism novel. We're going with this is shifting so much. It is considered a sentimental novel that revolves around Uncle Tom, the main character the hero, the protagonist. A long-suffering black slave and the novel depicts the reality of slavery while also asserting that Christianity and Christian love can overcome something as destructive as enslavement of fellow human beings. That is, that, that, I have it in my iPad, I haven't read it, but I'm, I will someday. 
Some they're really fun. Um, and let's talk about Simon Lee Green. He is a vicious slave owner. Vicious. Because let me let me tell you why. He is remorseless and is has inhuman cruelty. And he despises Tom because of his religious beliefs. And because he is racist. Duh. And he tries his best to break his faith, basically. And he eventually ordered... Uh, oh, my God, that wasn't going to be a spoiler. Sorry. You better finish that sentence. Ah, damn it. Um, he, um, he, he whips Tom to death because of his religion. There you have it. You don't have to read it. You have to read it. <laughs> no. It's an anti-racism novel, and we cannot tolerate racist people like Simon Lee Green. Even though we're talking about villains. Exactly. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to number six, and let me see if you have said something. No, you haven't. Okay. Number six is our favorite psychopath, Norman Bates. Yes. From the novel Psycho, written by Robert Bloch in 1959, and also famous for the movie by Alfred Hitchcock, made in 1960, Psycho. You know... You gotta watch that. It's it's weird. Basically, Norman Bates is a person dominated by his mother, by Norma Bates, Norma Bates, who basically forbids him to have a life without her. So, yeah, that's that's wrong. And the novel revolves around Norman Bates after, with um, during this psychological thing about where he dresses as his mother and has the corpse of his mother in his house and even kills his uh, his lover but blames it on the mother which is basically him and he also like speaks to himself in the voice of Norma Bates so he got mommy issues well he, she was the villain actually she was a villain but basically but she kills him I mean he kills him he kills Norma Bates and we he have kills her. I yeah he kills Norma Norma Bates, which is basically also a villain, but Norman creates a psychological so uh, psycho killer wanting to destroy and all that. So that's why he's like the main villain, like the psycho of, every, of everything. I like that story actually. Uh, psycho. Yeah. I haven't read it. No, I saw that movie. Ah, okay. Which yeah. is pretty cool. She deserved to die actually. Yeah. She, she she wait no, he kills he kills the the lover the mother kills herself. I don't remember. Yeah, kills she her. she kills herself. She deserves to die. Yeah, she does. I mean, no, no one deserves to die. She did. Well, she was bad actually, but she 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 killed herself and basically I think that's why Norman like has this remorse because he cannot go on without the mother and he dresses like her and everything. That is weird. Oh my god, I'm gonna I read that. I'm gonna read that. And if you want to uh, see a revamp of Psycho, you can watch Bates Motel. It's a very good series. It's a very good series. I mean, it's it's slowly transforming Norman Bates into the psychopath that we all love and hate. So, Psycho, Nor uh, Bates Motel. And the comments are not coming in. Okay. Number seven. Let's go with this uh, with the psychopath and the murderers and all that. Hannibal Lecter, our favorite. Yes. Yes, our favorite cannibal from the book Red Dragon. Yeah, it is a book by Thomas Harris, written in 1891. So basically, this is about a psychotic murderer and also a cannibalist called Hannibal Lecter. That he, uh, an agent called Will Graham, um, seeks for his help to clear out some murders and then. Uh, the murder is caused by another wait, wait, another culprit by the name of the Tooth Fairy, which is basically somebody that is um, that Lecter finds him and leads him to Will Graham's house to kill him. Wait, Will Graham is it a girl? I think it was a girl. I can't remember. Yeah. Okay. Joe Brady Foster. <laughs> That's the movie. That's the, the Silence movie. of the Lambs. I know, but basically. Hannibal Lecter is considered the villain because he is a mastermind and is very and is very and is very calculative and hello, what's more evil than wanting to eat somebody else? Just for when their pleasure. Skin on? What? 
putting their skin on and walking out of jail. Oh my god, he did that right. Yeah, <laughs> he did that. Jesus. And if you also want a, uh, a revamp of the Hannibal Lecter, Hannibal, the series. I haven't watched it, but I saw some clips, and it's hella crazy. But it's good from what I've seen. The clips, the little clips. I'm just saying. So, let's continue. Dracula. Count Dracula from Dracula by Bram Stoker, 1897. I'm never going to read it. This is good. You should read it. I'm never going to read it. Um, you should. <laughs> she read it. We're going to have some fun here. I'm reading it. Uh, she's reading it because it's long, right? No, because when I got used to the protagonist journal, the book changed. And now it's, it's Beyonce, her best friend, the best friend Beyonce, then the... Protagonist again, I keep going, 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 and I wow. hate so many diaries. See, I, 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 it's like Frankenstein. Remember that it like goes, it diverges from time to time. Yeah, but the one's worse. Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, let's talk about Can Dracula and why he's a villain. Um, basically because he is the ultimate vampire of all literature. Is there any more reason? He is, we have a discussion here because she, uh, I found that he's charming and she said that he's not charming. But I think that charming is like, hey, how are you? Let me suck your blood up. Something like that. But basically he entices them uh, the victims and seduces them and then, you know, takes the bite. And that's why Dracula is awesome because he will drink your blood. That's evil. Sure is. But it's dark. It's a creature that is so weird and so obscure that, you know, Dracula is Dracula. He is he needs to be considered into the top villains of all literature. We love you, Dracula. But I'm still I'm still team werewolf. I think the protagonist is worse. But you you gotta take in consideration that those novels are, are very lengthy and very <sighs> Tedious. No, but Dracula actually is protecting the protagonist in the first half of the book. So he isn't the villain. He's protecting him from other vampires. The protagonist insists on getting himself in trouble. I'm going to read it. So you <laughs> that should. protagonist sounds like a dumb dumb. Is he's he... an idiot. Everybody's saying, don't go there. They're crossing their stuff like this. Don't and go he's there. Like, oh my and God, he yeah. goes there. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Everybody's doing this, and I'm going to the castle. <laughs> Don't go tonight. Go the other night, because tonight every is where every spirit can come free into the world. Don't go this night. No, I want to go this night. All right, go. The, it's that a, night. it's a, it's a hero that we hate, right? Yeah. Ugh. I'm gonna read it because I. Don't get I out of this tower. He goes out of the tower. <laughs> I want to push him out of the tower myself. I think Isander was read the novel. He should also comment if he sees the video. Oh my god, I thought I heard something. somebody walking outside. Since we're talking about villains, you know, a murderer right now wouldn't, wouldn't be bad. I'm kidding, it would be bad. Um, I don't like that camera, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. Okay, number nine. Let's talk about our favorite horror writer, Stephen King. This book called Misery, written in 1987, has what is considered one of his most iconic villains, in all his literary works, Annie Wilkes, best portrayed by Katie Bates. Katie Bates, sorry. Yeah. In that movie, in the movie Mystery. Let's. I'm gonna read what I found and. Okay, she is a mentally. Oh wait, mentally unstable Annie takes Paul Sheldon in after she breaks both legs. No, after he breaks both legs in an accident, has the right. Writer of her favorite books, Will oh my god, I wrote some Wilkes reveals a psychotic obsession for him and his books. Taking him hostage, yay, here comes a weird part. Subjecting him to psychological and sick, uh, physical torture and forcing him to write his latest novel how she wants it. Jesus, okay. So we have a murderous. Fan, 
a psychotic fan. Don't worry, this. A psychotic fan because you know every obsessed obsessed fan will do that. Like take hostage. Oh what? Yeah, me too. I will do that. Like my favorite writer. Wait, who's my favorite writer? I don't have a favorite. Yeah, but he's dead. I will do that to John Green. Be careful, and John Green. Orden. Be careful, John Green. They deserve to die sometimes. Jesus. J.K. Rowling too. Let's see who else I would. Ray Bradbury, I love him. Is he alive? I don't know. I hope so. I love him. Funny fact: the book that he writes while he's in captivity is the best book he ever makes. So basically, us writers need to be um, entrapped by, I mean, trapped by uh, a crazy fan so we can write our masterpiece. Exactly. Moraleja. Okay, and wait, let me let me tell you something more about Annie Wilkes. She's a oh my god, Jesus. She's uh, an infamous serial killer to top it all off because of what she does. She stabs a state trooper with a wooden cross and runs him over with a lawnmower. That's beautiful. And after chopping Sheldon's foot off with an axe, and uh, after well, she chops Sheldon's wood, uh, foot off with an axe and burns it with a blowtorch. Burns it. Evil. She broke his legs. She so. broke, yeah, too. So basically, like, she did a favor to him. And that's why any walk is right now is, like, my favorite villain of all this list because she is crazy. Okay? She is crazy. Watch the movie. Katie Bates does an, an excellent job in that movie. Yeah, she... She, she bit me! Yeah, she does that. Sorry. Um, okay, no. She hates you now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Evil doggy. Evil doggy. Okay, let's let's go with fantasy and epicness. Lord of the Rings by J. R. R. Tolkien. Maria, Maria Victoria, this is for you. Written in 1954, the evil Sauron. He is a tyrannical ring bearer uh, who has an insatiable lust for power. Like every villain should have. Like, who wants power? I do. And he provides a foundation for the villainy in the trilogy of Lord of the Rings. And he desperately seeks, seeks the ring, Da. And in order to bind the magical power that surrounds it, and Sauron will stop at nothing to have that ring. Because if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Okay. And he basically is seen as an all-seeing eye and the source of all evil in the Law of the Rings world and universe. So we we remember when when, when those movies came out, when we were like, wow, that eye. I mean, I was like that. No. <laughs> I was like that. I liked it. Sure. Okay. Oh, my God. Can you go below? Okay. Sauron. Sauron. So the evil eye. Let's go with number 11. We are in our top five. Or it's not top five, basically. Last five? Last five, yeah. <laughs> I need to go to the page here. Wait. Okay, too many comments. Please wait before. Oh, oh let me check the po comments. Oh my god, the comments are not co uh, coming in. What the hell? Oops. White murder. Wait, let me see. Okay, then I'm gonna put. Hi, here we are. <laughs> okay. She's talking about um, <laughs> um, Lily's talking about. I think she's talking about um Annie Wilkes. So, she hates him. Okay. Her, her, her. Okay. Hi, Lily. She's awesome. Annie Wilkes? Yeah. Okay. Well, Maybe. I can relate. I'm a fan, and my writers have killed my favorite characters. Ah, oh, damn it. I, 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 okay, you're lucky. I'm sorry. I'm looking for the web page so we can. I can. I ran out of time to write all of it, so I'm going to read it from the web page. Um. <laughs> The next villain is called Patrick Bateman, another psychopath from the book 
American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis, written in 1991. I mean, I know that have any of you seen the movie. Um, what's his name? What's his name? The guy that is Batman also. I forgot his name. But he portrays uh, Patrick Bay. He portrays Patrick Bateman in such an awesome way. It's creepy. Okay. Let me tell you what it... Uh, let me read you what it says here. To call Patrick Bateman, uh, Bateman a villain is probably underplaying it a little. A wealthy and successful invest, investment banker, yes, but also a violent psychopath whose hobbies include drug addiction, murder, rape, cannibalism, mutilation, and necrophilism. That's Great. beautiful. Of course, whether or not any of the violent as described actually happen or are just figments of his own imagination is open to debate. But this is his story and he is the undisputed villain of it of it. So in he goes to the list. Yeah, he's in the list. Yeah. In the movie he kills his coworker and the book it says that he takes a tube like um like a water tube and he inserts it inside of a woman's vagina and lets a mouse loose inside of her. He makes Hannibal sound like a little kid. Yeah, Patrick Bateman is the. Uh, I need to read the book. It's 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 creepy, you know. No, that's going in the never read. That's going in the vault, and it's gone. <laughs> I did an adventure time there. Okay. Um, no more comments. Okay. Apparently, there's so much comments. Wait, sorry. Okay. Villain number twelve. And you, your childhood is gonna be. You know, you're going to remember this for childhood, in your childhood. From the book, it is a book, Bambi, A Life in the Woods by Felix Salton, written in 1923. And the villain, he. He, that's all it says. The single saddest event of everyone's childhood. No, that was Mufasa's death. Oh my God, Mufasa's death, yes. Okay. Was the moment when Bambi's mother got shot. Therefore, the unnamed he who committed the most unforgivable crime in literary history, must rank as one of the greatest villains of all time. <laughs> and look, look what it says here. No, we're not crying. It's just, be, it's just been raining in our faces. <laughs> this is a funny page. What? Scar is worse than him. Yeah, I know, but you, uh, 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 the Lion King doesn't have a book. I don't care. Yeah, but we're going to go with the popular culture <laughs> right now. Let me end with the, with the liter literature. Yes, Bambi is a book, you know, uh, a book, the classic tale of a young deer and his, and his animal friends. And we, we, I mean, we remember that part. It's horrible. It's, it's, it's very sad. Ah, Johnny, you heartless monster. <laughs> you mio. Okay. Jesus, Johnny, I didn't know you. I thought I knew you. <laughs> okay. Number th uh, 12. From the book. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, written by L. Frank Baum, and Changing the Century and the way we see the literature, because it's written in 1900, um, The Wicked Witch of the West. Fly, my pretties, fly! The flying monkeys. Okay. I'm melting! You know, look what it says here. No one knows the backstory of the Wicked Witch of the West or her co-conspirators, the Wicked Witch of the South and the Wicked Witch of, uh, Witch of the East. But they were definitely witches and definitely wicked, all dry and wizened. <laughs> that, that rhyme. She tries to thwart our heroes with plagues of wolves, crowds, beasts, and soldiers, but to no avail. And she even hits Toad of the Dog with her umbrella. Now that's unforgivable. People. She hits it. Yeah, we need, I need to read that book because I've only seen the movie. And it's an excellent movie, but we need to, you know, know our literary backgrounds. And it's raining. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, you just thought, Jesus, I'm going to go down that road. It's raining. Exactly. <laughs> God, I know you. Okay. The Wicked Witch of the West. Another, it's a, she is a witch. Most witches, well, I mean, we have the the white witch generally are evil, so generally. Because the witches of, of American Horror Story Coven, they're cool. Some of them. They're evil too. Some of them. They're evil. Some of them. They're evil. Uh, just, do you, you see the racism against witches? Hey, I love witches. That's not even they're racism evil. because the witch is not a race. 
<laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. Let's go with... Wait, let me see if there are any comments. No, no comments. You're not gonna find the comments. Yeah. Just give up. That saddens me. No, it doesn't. I know it's it's a lot. Wait, sorry. Um, are, are you okay? Are you bored? No? Okay. <laughs> Let's go with lit, with poetry again, an epic poem. The anonymous epic poem, Beowulf, has the villain called Grendel, which is a mythical villain. Of the Anglo-Saxon epic poem, Beowulf, Grendel is commonly regarded as a monster and a descendant of the first biblical murderer, Cain. Yeah. Wow. I did not know that. We uh, we talked about Grendel briefly. Well, we talked about Beowulf in Hero of July and how Grendel was this troll that lived in the in the kingdom and he hated the the feast, the great party that the king throws, and he basically kills and eats people that go into the swamplands. So okay, he is feared by all except the hero Beowulf, and. Uh, and quite right too, seemingly being a big fan of killing and eating anyone he finds in the meat hall of Hera. That's the name of the party. The Hera. Oh, it's chilly. For that reason alone, he must be ranked as one of the greatest villains of all. You know. And his mother is also villainous, so when Grendel dies, Grendel's mother comes to kill Beowulf because you will not kill my baby boy. Ooh, mama man. Yeah, I'm gonna read Beowulf someday. I have it in my iPad. Yeah, that's in my bowl of not reading. Really. And bolt again. Okay. Now let's go to the wizarding world of the British J.K. Rowling, written in 10 years in the decade of 1997 to 2007, being the last book, the final confrontation of Lord of Voldemort and Harry Potter. I just said Potter. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, uh, Lord Voldemort is the Fierce, that that fierce, the the fear the villain in all the wizarding world, to you know being called you know who the Dark Lord and he who who must not be named, Lord of Voldemort. And described by Rowling as the most evil wizard for hundreds and hundreds of years, and that's evil. That's evil. I mean, come on, he wants to kill a baby. He kills the parents of of Harry Potter and to prove that he can be evil and he can be immortal but I think that's his flaw he divides his soul into how many horcruxes? Ten? Seven. Seven. Seven horcruxes and he he considers Harry Potter his nemesis and he is I mean creepy and he has no nose that's evil and he looks like a serp like a, like a serpent hence why he's from Slytherin no, he's from Slytherin because his grandpa was Salazar Slytherin. And that's why he's evil. All Slytherin people are evil, Johnny. Not all of them. Who is he not evil? Harry Potter's son, James, he's from Slytherin and he's not evil. Hello, he's Harry Potter's son. Well, he can't be evil. And Harry was supposed to be evil, Slytherin, but he chose Gryffindor at the last Yeah, week. yeah, Harry Potter was supposed to be a uh, Slytherin. Because Slytherin Corridor is either your leader, a leader, and I don't remember the other one. Great, and yes, I don't know what else. And you, ah, <laughs> Oh my god, parcel tongue. Okay. Bornemo is a... Bornemo is a weird guy. I mean, he I have... Family issues. He, he has, has family issues. issues, yeah. And, you know, he's just like, let me kill you with an Abade Kedavra because it's fun. That's evil, man. That's evil. Bornemo, I'm happy that you're dead. Like... Seven years ago. <laughs> and he didn't only attack Harry's parents. He also attacked Neville. Of the Phoenix by... No, um, he... Dumbledore. He received a prophecy that he was supposed to be killed by someone that was born in the month of July. So he basically attacked every little boy. Harry Potter is a Leo? No, he can be a... a, a whatever. Okay. I don't know. So it. he's a murderous guy because he wanted to kill uh, babies from inside... Uh, because a prophecy was said. That's weird, man. Okay, and number 15 that I found interesting because it's written by one of my favorite authors. I'm sorry, that's my guilty pleasure. By Ray Bradbury, written in 1962, Something Wicked This Way Comes. 
And the evil person, the villain, is Mr. Dark. And here's a description of him. The dark and evil villain of Ray ba Bradbury's fantastical classic, Mr. Dark, specializes in moving vulnerable souls into joining the carnival something. I mean, the carnival. Something which is nowhere near as fun as it sounds. He bears tattoos on his body, one for every victim, and cannot abide positivity or affection. Okay. We gotta read that. Ray Bradbury is known for horror, science fiction, and fantasy. So, that, that that's why he's on the list. Yeah, and people are kind of stupid, Mr. Dark. I don't think the name... Mr. Dark is a hero! Yeah. With that name. Wow. Yeah, that wasn't kind of original, but maybe that's why maybe that's why he wanted that. It's that it that he he didn't want it to be original, so he like he wanted it to be straightforward evil. Ray Bradbury, you have your 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 reasons for making him called Mr. Dark. Okay, so let's talk about the villains of pop culture and 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 anime and 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 movies. Superheroes, the main villain, Magneto, in my opinion. He's cool. He is cool. I mean, a villain that can't control metal and he's like, hey, I'm better than you. But he's not evil. He is not evil because he's trying to defend his kind of the mutant. Exactly. But he goes in some weird ways and extent that is considered evil in society. Well, he needs to make a change, and people won't let him. He needs to... For example, Professor X. Professor X is the first one that doesn't let, make him do a change. What? What? I'm... 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 I'm, I'm yeah. Which other villain do you consider from, like, comics and all that? Joker. Ah! <laughs> of course! The Joker! That creepy-ass weird man, you know? I haven't read the comics, but we all know that he's very weird. And from all the movies that that that, that they portrayed him, the, the Dark Knight it will be my favorite always. Heath Ledger, may you rest in peace, and your talent was awesome. You made an awesome Joker, because he is so he's so he's so evil in a way that it's like not even accepted, because it's he breaks you from here. Not like Bane that breaks you from the that he did to Batman. Yeah, but the the Batman universe has some interesting villains like Scarecrow and and Catwoman. The Riddle. The Riddler. Yeah, that's cool too. Um, let's go to uh, other ones. Let's see. Let me see. Scar. From uh from Disney villains. Let's Scar. Scar is the badass a villain because he I mean he has a scar and he's like all. Oh, I'm surrounded by idiots, you know, and all of that. He was. Yeah, he was surrounded by idiots. And also another Disney villain, Maleficent, the mistress of all evil because she can be evil. That's the reason. In the original Sleeping Beauty, she just interrupts uh, the, uh, the the baptism. Wait, is it the baptism? The presentation of the yeah, baby? Yeah, the presentation of Aurora to the kingdom. And she, like, interrupts it with, hello, I'm evil. And I'm just gonna curse your baby because I'm evil, and I can transform into a dragon that like bursts out uh, green flames. And she's have you seen her? That's her. beautiful. And now we have a reason why she's evil uh, with the with the revamp of of Sleeping Beauty with Maleficent that tells a story in which we know that the king King Stefan is evil. He cuts her wings. Damn, and that, and that's why. Pause, rewind. Why are but why are villains evil? Because they want change and go and get it instead of following rules. They are also they also want power. But and the good guys want power. Look at the government. They're not the good guys. Supposedly they are. <laughs> That's why I'm uh, I'm wearing this shirt, villainous. Oh no! Oh my God, we're gonna get destroyed. Um, so uh, another villain that you like? Let me see. Can you Prince like Prince Eric? Who? Prince Eric, um, the Little Mermaid. I hate that movie. <laughs> Not the movie, the story. Oh well, yeah, the story. He was a douche. 
Yeah, I think he, he was a douche. One of the primary yeah. Villains he out was there. a douche. Or yeah, he was a complete douche. I mean, he like saw the the he even laughed at, at Ariel that she was like tumbling and like, "Oh, you can't walk and you're like gushing and ugh, like that." And she ended up marrying he ended up marrying another woman. And Ariel like became foam of the sea foam. <laughs> What a douche. That's why Disney is like, you know, you need to read the classic fairy tales from Hans Christian Andersen or the Green Brothers so you can get an idea of how how evil people are from the original movies. Let's go. Um, what another one? Um, animes. Mm. For all the Naruto fans. <laughs> you're not a Naruto fan. Yeah, you're a Naruto yeah. fan. But, um, you know that right now things are going weird in the anime. Because we don't know who the villain is anymore. <laughs> oh my god, I'm not even gonna talk about the villains in Naruto. There's too many of them, and but uh, it's it's depressing. I don't know. I explained the beginning of Shippuden. Well, good for you. <laughs> good for you. But for me, the ultimate villain is gonna be Madara, because that guy's evil just because he can be. Okay, other other literary villains. Suko pre before in the first two books. Okay, yeah, from um, Avatar: The Last Airbender. But we can consider that the primary villain of all is the Lord, the Fire Lord Ozai, because he wanted to take, or he managed to take over the Earth Kingdom, and yeah, he managed to take over the Earth Kingdom. And he, when the the Socians come and came, he got the all Firebenders got this power. And he just wanted to take over the world there because he had immense power, infernal power, just because he can. And we're happy that Aang just took away his powers. He's bending. But no, another villain, Azula. Man, she was a royal bitch. Azula is I'm sorry. <laughs> Azula is the is the evil of all evil in all Nickelodeon to uh, cartoons and. I mean, she's she was calculative, cold, and she ended up crazy. I love how she ended up crazy, and she had blue flames. That was awesome. That wasn't lightning. Lightning and blue flame, but she she did lightning and she fire bended, but the fire came blue. You don't remember that? Because of the lightning. Maybe I don't know, but <laughs> Zuko. I don't know, maybe because she's a girl, and her name is Azula. Azul, Azul. Yeah. That that was that was that was chauvinistic. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, another villain. So we can end this workshop. Another villain. Another villain. Team Rocket. <laughs> From Pokemon. Now all all villainous um, organizations like Team Rocket, not the trio. You know, Giovanni, Team Magma, Team Aqua. Team Plasma, I jumped one. Team Galactic. Yeah, Team Flare, all that. But that's what people like. And there are many more villains that we haven't talked about. Like in, in, in things that we've read. Luke, Frankenstein Monster, and... Um, you mean Darth Vader? Darth Vader, too. Uh, Darth Vader, yes. No, but I meant Luke from the uh, Percy Jackson movies. And I, books. I, I haven't read the Percy Jackson uh, books, so sorry. I'm ashamed. <laughs> well, okay, I'm going to end this today from, from here. I have already, let me recap what I've done. I've talked about 15 literary villains according to a page, and uh, there are opinions, but I think that those villains have characteristics and actions that make them like the villains of these books. And I hope that you read some of them. I know I will. Someday. I will. Jesus. Um, and Back to the Bone August has begun. Um, so be sure to start writing. Start uh, reading short stories with villains and all that. Um, and be... Uh, Stay in tune. <laughs> Stay in tune to the workshops. 
they're probably going to have some changes in September because, you know, Lily and I and all of us are going to start the semester on August thir uh, 13. And I'll, I'm, no, I'm happy. This is her. Uh, this is me. <laughs> the semester is going to start. Hey. Oh, shut up. You're going to be next semester. You're going to be in, in Iowa. Jesus. So let's play with the dark side right now. Remember to um, <laughs> remember to spread the word. Tell people that we have a Facebook page, UPRH Creative Writing Workshop, a Twitter, UPRH underscore CWWS, our blog, UPRHCWWS.blogspot.com, in which we upload the written works and all that of our of our writers. And please support us. We're going to, we, it has begun. Evil August, back to the bone August. And we're going to stop. <laughs> so Lily Beth is going to be next week, August 7, because it's my birthday. And I'm going to be hanging out. I don't know what I'm going to do for my birthday. Probably be in college because you're such a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's going to be talking about character development for villains. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, how to develop a villain. So be sure to tune in, please. I haven't seen so many people, so I know many of you are busy. But please watch the video afterwards. Um, because we're doing this for the better uh, for the betterment of you, and so you can become better writers. And we hope that this semester we have a professor with us doing the workshop, so she or he can um, talk about um, our works. And we're gonna become an association this semester, so we're gonna do activities, readings. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be cool. And well, this is it for the first workshop of Bad to the Bone August. Um, and thank you, Danny, for being uh, for being here and commenting. So this is Johnny, by the way. She was talking about the, the, the she was the one that talked uh, that was afraid of commenting. Or he wrote in July. So some of you remember her. She writes, but she hates it. I don't hate writing. I just enjoy reading your stories more. So we are doing a good work. And we're going to do a better work now. So I hope you guys like this video. And please keep writing. And I hope to see you soon on August something. <laughs> Look. Oh my god, my dog. Uh, uh, Her name is not Lily. No, but it's Paulette. Sorry. Venga, Paulette, venga. Say goodbye to the people. Tell them you're evil. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Enjoy the rest of the summer, guys.